What should you do if your healing is taking forever, right? One of the things you can do is stop focusing on healing. I know that might not sound like it makes sense, but that's what I'll be talking about in today's lesson. So I'll see you here in a minute. Welcome to another episode of Karis Daily. My name is Daniel Bennett. It is great to see you all today. Um, yeah, it's a real honor to get to share with you guys on these things. This message today is about what to do when your healing's taking forever. And the answer specifically in this episode is sometimes stop focusing on healing. And I want to explain what I mean by that. Um, I don't mean you should stop hoping for healing or standing in faith for healing, anything like that. Um, I, I kind of talked about this last time I was with you all. Sometimes you want to change lanes. And what I mean by that is if you're driving, and you hit a roadblock, sometimes just get in a different lane until you get past the roadblock and then you get back into the original lane. Another example I have on this is uh, many years ago, I was taking a weightlifting class and I know that doesn't surprise any of you. <laughs> One look at me, you're like, that guy has got, taken a weightlifting class. No, but I, I remember asking, said my, my knees, um, they, they crackle when I, when I you know, bend in certain ways. And I said, how do you strengthen your knees? And they said, well, you can't actually strengthen your knees you strengthen the mu muscles surrounding your knees. So they said, what you want to do is strengthen the surrounding muscles and that will strengthen your knees as a result. And many times that's what it is, where sometimes you focus on one topic so much that you forget you actually need to strengthen some surrounding muscles, right? So you may say, I want revelation in this area. Okay, but revelation in other areas may actually help that. And it's all interconnected. All true revelation points to Jesus. It all stems from Jesus and points to Jesus. And so, right, if you say, I'm only going to focus on healing. Yeah, but what if you needed to understand more about God's love? What if you needed to understand more about healing or forgiveness or righteousness or grace or things like that? There's other, there's other surrounding things, other surrounding topics that may actually be what you need to be set free. God knows these things. See, we may, we may focus on the, on the exact result we need and say, that's what I need to study. Or if you say, if I want to grow corn, I need to study corn. There's a place for that. But you may hit a roadblock and say, studying about corn is not helping me anymore. Maybe I need to study dirt. Maybe I need to study water. Maybe I need to study uh, climate, things like that. Hope that makes sense. So I'm not saying you stop focusing on Jesus. I'm saying maybe you, you stop focusing on that one specific area where you have a, a desperate need. And maybe other areas that God leads you into will actually set you free and create a breakthrough, right? Like I said, you change lanes so you can get back into it after, after you get past the roadblock. Another example of this, imagine you're teaching a child math and they just hit something where they're like addition, I get it. Subtraction, I get it. Multiplication, I get it. Division, I'm lost, right? One, one approach is to just focus on division and say, we're just going to spend all our time focusing on division and that may work. But if it doesn't work, then it could actually become counterproductive, right? If you only focus on division and say, we're just going to focus on this one thing that you're not getting until you get it, it could become discouraging. You start to forget other things. You, they might lose their confidence. Um, th they could just start saying, what's wrong with me? I'm not good at this. They could start questioning their identity, their, their intellect, all these different things. So instead of focusing on that, right? Again, sometimes you say, I just need to focus on it a little bit more. And that's what most people do. My point is when it's taking forever, right? When you're saying, I know God put this promise in my heart. I know this is what he wants for me. It's just taking forever. Sometimes the approach is I just need to double down and focus on this more. But sometimes the approach is I'm going to shift gears and, fo and focus on something else for a while. And just, God, what do you want me to focus on? A lot of times we go to God with an agenda when we pray and say, God, this is what I need you to talk to me about. What's very liberating is when we can say, God, you know what I need better than I know what I need. You tell me what we should talk about. I know, you know I have a need in this area. You know I need healing in this part of my body or that my loved one needs healing in this area. But is that what you want me to focus on? Because see, if you don't trust God, you'll say, if I don't bring this up, you might not realize I need this. But if you know him and you trust him and you realize you love me more than I love me, you care about me more than I do. So if you tell me to focus on, on peace or forgiveness or finances and you're saying, that, what's that have to do with healing. You know what? If you're telling me to focus on that, I trust you. And so I'm going to focus on that area because God knows what will lead to the breakthrough. Because again, he wants you to receive your healing more than you want it. So he's not going to tell you to focus on something else if it's not for your good. So again, trust God. Trust that if he's leading you in what looks like a weird direction, 
is that he may know things you don't know. He may know things, you know, there's a lie that you might be believing and it has nothing to do with healing, but it's, it's getting in the way of receiving your healing. But he may know that. He may say, look, it's, you're so, you know, there's an area of offense in your heart. There's an area of pride in your heart. I want to set you free from that. And then all these other results start falling into place. So, again, one of the things you could do with a child, if they're trying to teach some math and they get stuck at division, after a while, you may say, you know what? Let's not focus on division for a while. Let's go back to addition and subtraction. Rebuild your confidence. Maybe we'll focus on history for a while or science for a while. Let's focus on some other topics. And maybe something that happens along the way there will allow the breakthrough where now you, you go back to division later on and you realize, my goodness, this is easy now. And so sometimes you shift topics and that allows you to grow even more. You know, there's been things in my life that I stood in faith for and I just didn't see the result right away. And if I had stayed fixated there, I would have stopped growing. But instead I said, you know what, God, you know this is a desire of my heart. I'm still going to, to talk with you about this every now and then. But I'm not going to make this the central focal point of my walk with you. I'm going to grow in other areas. And if I hadn't done that, there's so many areas where I wouldn't have grown and been set free and become stronger and walk in more peace and joy and love and kindness and more in my true identity. And then when I grow in those other areas, I come back to that other need. Sometimes I realize, oh, that, that was taken care of already. It just happened automatically. Or other times I say, I realize, oh, now it's easier for me to overcome this because I've become so much stronger in other areas. I hope this is making sense, right? Um, if you only focus on division, right, teaching math, if you only focus on that, they may start to hate division. They may start to hate math. They may never want to learn again. Same thing can happen with healing. Some people may start to hate healing and start to create doctrine that's anti-healing because they get so frustrated at it when you could just shift topics, right? Jesus hardly ever, he, he healed people. He hardly ever taught on healing. Right? And so it, you don't have to teach on healing. He could say, love your neighbor as yourself and I'm going to heal you. What does that have to do with each other? He's, he's life. He's light. Everything that comes from Jesus is life and light. It leads to those things. You don't have to teach on healing for people to be healed. You don't have to study healing to receive your healing. It's all about Jesus. It's all about knowing Him and who He is in us. So don't feel like you're walking away from healing by shifting your focus to another aspect of Jesus. Again, it's all just different um, facets of who he is. So again, what's my point in all this is change lanes, change subjects. You can focus on different things, ask, ask different questions, things like that. I remember hearing a testimony once of someone who was so focused on healing and it wasn't happening. Then God put on their heart to focus on joy. And so they just started watching funny TV shows and funny movies and reading comics and stuff. And they just laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And then they were, they were healed before they, they didn't even realize when it happened because they were so focused just on the joy of the Lord and that set them free. And before they were like, hey, wait a minute, I don't have those symptoms anymore. So again, I'm not talking about giving up. I'm talking about sometimes the way God wants to lead you there isn't what you expect. Sometimes we're too bu so busy talking to God, we're not listening to God. We're saying, no, God, I want to talk about this. And he's saying, I hear you. Let's go this direction. And so, and you just trust that he knows things that we don't know. He sees the big picture. He sees, again, he's not saying, well, my promise doesn't work for you. He's saying, I know where you're at right here, right now. I know how you'll receive what I need you to receive. Um, I know what steps will help you get there and what you're ready to receive right now. Um, things like that. So uh, let's see here real quick. Yeah how, do you, uh, yeah, how do you strengthen a muscle? Sometimes you want to strengthen the surrounding muscles, right? If you want a really strong arm, you don't only work out your arm. You need to work out your back. You need to work out your core. You need to work out your legs. Because if you only have one strong arm, then you can't actually lift very heavy things. You need your fingers to be strong. You need all these other areas to be strong. So again, don't get tunnel vision. And that leads to discouragement if you just say, all I'm going to focus on is my need. I'm going to listen to 20,000 hours on healing because that's what I want. Again, I'd say it's a good place to start. But as soon as you start seeing diminishing returns, say maybe there's some surrounding things. Maybe I just need to focus on more on God's love or focus more on joy, focus more on peace, on, on kindness, on loving others, on generosity. I'm just going to focus on anything God puts on my heart, even if it doesn't sound connected, because I, I have faith that it is connected and that it will lead to me growing in the areas where I have needs as well. So again, sometimes we get tunnel vision. It's easy to get tunnel vision when there's a desperate need. It could be your, your finances. It could be a specific relationship in your life. It could be your peace. It could be all kinds of things. And when they're desperate, and I'm not diminishing this at all, when, when it's a, something desperate, it's screaming for attention. Right? Everything in us is like, I have this desperate need and I take it to God. 
but don't be surprised. Don't fight or resist if he's leading you to areas that don't seem to make sense on the surface because um, it, does, it does make sense underneath the surface. Like I said, all revelations interconnected. And so we want to be willing to approach things from multiple angles, right? Learning about finances could change your marriage. Learning about uh, hope could change your parenting. Everything's interconnected, so just be willing to let God speak to you beyond. Don't put God in a box. That's what I, it, don't, don't say, God, you have to speak to me like this or else I refuse to hear you because he knows other ways of getting where you're trying to go. He knows where you need to go too. So again, don't say, God, I need this healing so much. It's too urgent. I don't have time to learn about your love for me. But maybe that's what you actually need to learn about. Um, don't say, God, I'm so broke. I can't learn about anything other than finances. Maybe there's something else. Now I'm repeating this a lot, but it's very important to really get this ingrained in us. That, that life is life. Light is light. Light casts out darkness. I mentioned, I think last time, uh, I was ministering once on, um, on humility and someone was healed. I wasn't teaching on healing, but humility led to that because it's interconnected, right? Receiving from God is an act of humility. Receiving your healing is an act of humility. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 32 says, for after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So he's saying, you, you can seek God without fear that he, you know, it's not like God doesn't know what you need. He's saying, God knows what you need. You need these things. You need food, you need clothing, you need health, you need finances, you need all these different things. He knows, you know, he knows that you need those things. He's saying, if you seek me first, if you follow me and let me show you the kingdom, trust me, I'll take care of those things too. You don't have to take God all your needs necessarily. Um, if you trust Him, if you're going to Him, He'll take you and take care of the needs and things you didn't even know you should be asking for. Right, so, again, many times it can be a chain reaction, right? Where, you know, you may say, I need this over here, right? And God says, no, what you need is joy. And then you get the joy. And now that you have the joy, you have this amazing peace. Now that you have this peace, you have this freedom. Now that you have this freedom, you understand how much God loves you. Now that you, how much, now that you know how much God loves you, you realize all His gifts are free. They're freely given. That he just wants to bless you. And then you say, well, then you realize, oh, healing's a piece of cake. This is easy for God. Why would He not do this for me? So many times it can be a chain reaction that is many areas of our hearts, and then suddenly we receive things that, um, the things that we knew we needed as a result of receiving things that we didn't know we needed. Right? Sometimes God may lead you to do something. It's not just about what we feed ourselves, but sometimes it's actions that may not make sense or seem connected. Right? So, for example, you may say, I know I'm healed in Jesus' name. I know that by His stripes I'm healed. This is given to me. It's in me. It's in my spirit. I'm already healed. But why is God telling me to go ask this person to pray for me? I don't need someone else to pray for me. I'm healed. But God may know that, you know, in, he's, he's going to use them to bless you. He's going to use them to heal you. Maybe there's some hang-up that he needs someone else to help lift you up, right? In James where he says, you know, is any sick among you? Let him go to the elders of the church. He doesn't say, are any of the baby Christians among you sick? He said, is any among you sick? It's not second class to have somebody else lift you up. Like I said before, if your foot gets hurt, your hands can help heal your foot. Your hands can help alleviate the pain and do things to minister to your foot. We're a body. And so there's no shame in saying, you know what, God's leading me to receive healing from somebody else. Or God's leading me to go over here or go over there. I've heard of people being healed during worship where they're not even focused on receiving, they're focused on giving to God, but that opens up their hearts. Again, God knows you so well that if you just follow what He's leading you to do, He will lead you into, into the situations and into the actions that will that will allow you to receive what he's trying to give to you. Again, it's kind of like if you give someone a present and it's wrapped up and they can't figure out how to unwrap it. That's kind of how it is. God's already given us all these amazing things. It's not that we are trying to get him to give it to us. It's that if we're struggling to open up the wrapper and say, okay, Lord, I've been trying to pull off this rope and you're telling me like, no, I just need to remove this tape over here or here's some scissors, things like that. So God wants to help us unwrap these presents. He wants us to enjoy them, not just have them as promises in the word that we we, we believe in, we're aware of them, but we don't experience them. No, God wants us to experience them and enjoy them. So, again, God's never saying, I'm holding back. I'm not, I refuse to heal you directly, so I need you to go to that person. He just means, maybe he's saying, I know something you don't know. I want you, I'm leading you to go to this person. In the bottom line, in all of these things I'm saying, I'm saying basically the same thing over and over in different ways, 
is God knows what you need and how to get it to you. So he may lead to you to focus on a different topic, or he may lead you to go to someone else, or he may lead you to stop eating so many chips, or to wake up at a different time, or to go on a walk, or to change your mattress. He may, who cares what it is? If God's leading you to do something, there's a reason for it, so go for it. Um, yeah, sometimes God may say, yes, you can receive healing directly from me, but you won't, I know the future, I know that you won't be able to receive it in time. And so I, I know that you need someone to help lift you up because you won't get it in time. Um, and so you, you need, it's, it's an emergency. I need someone else to help you out. I need someone to help lift you up, things like that. There's no shame in that. We, we are designed to minister to each other. Um, too many times we make it all about you, right? I mentioned last time I, I was sharing with you, it's so easy to focus on the blame and make everything, well, if I need help from someone else, it must be my fault and I'm blaming you or I'm blaming me, what, all these different things. Don't worry about the blame. Just humbly, okay, I'll ask someone else to minister to me. It's okay to, to minister to each other, to lift each other up. We should all have that in our hearts of, can I do anything? Can God use me to bless you? Can God use you to bless me? Things like that. So, um, yeah, trust that God knows you. Just trust Him and obey Him. It's really what it's about. If He says focus on this, if He says go here, if He says do that, just trust Him. There's a reason for it. We don't have to understand it. right? I don't have to understand how a Band-Aid works to put a Band-Aid on a cut. I don't have to understand how things work to enjoy them. I don't have to understand how my phone works to use it. You don't have to understand why God's leading you a certain direction to obey Him. So, so you know what, God, you know things I don't know. I'm just going to follow you. I'd rather understand later and enjoy the results today instead of saying, until I understand why you're saying this, I'm not going to do it. It's a very slow way to live life with God, to say, prove yourself, explain yourself. I want my brain to understand every single thing you're asking me to do or I won't do it. You won't grow very much. You won't go very far. It's, it's great once we say, God, you've earned my trust. I trust you. You don't have to prove yourself to me. You don't have to convince me. If you say do this, I'll do it. And if I understand later, great. If I don't understand later, that's fine. I'm still going to, I just believe you, right? It's like I have kids. They don't always understand what I'm asking them to do. But if they, if they know me, they do. But as they mature, they'll know me more and more. They'll just say, you know what, I don't understand, but I understand you. I understand that you're good to me. I understand you love me. Because I would never ask them to do something that's not for their own good. I never am trying to take away from them. I'm trying to give them good things. Um, it's just they may not under always understand it. They may not understand why I want them to eat something that doesn't taste good. They may not understand why they need a bedtime. I'm saying, just, just trust me though. Same with God. If you trust Him, He can do so much in our life so fast if, if we just trust Him. It's absolutely amazing the things He can do in our lives if we don't slow Him down by always questioning Him. So I love asking God questions. That's different than questioning Him, saying, prove it, explain yourself. That's questioning Him. Asking questions is, oh, that's awesome, Lord. You know, what's that about? You know, can you explain this to me? Can you explain that to me? And so that's a fun relational thing and not questioning, saying, I don't know if I trust you about this. Philippians 1 verse 6, Philippians 1 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Right? He's working in us. He want, like In our spirit, it's finalized, but in our, in our lives, in our daily lives, in our souls, he's still working in us. And so just trust him. Say, I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to do everything I can to, to um, partner with you and becoming who you already made me in my spirit. I want to keep growing, and I just trust that you are going to continue working in me for the long haul. Um, yeah, he knows what we need. He knows how urgent it is. He knows the sequence. He knows all the, everything that's at stake, the whole deal. So there are areas in my life where I stood in faith for decades and, I, and before I saw something happen. And I'm so glad I didn't say I refuse to grow in other areas. Again, like I mentioned before, let God work in your life in many areas. Don't limit him because you're, you're focused on the one area where you don't see victory. You can experience victory in 10 other areas. Right? If you own 10 companies and one of them is losing tons of money and the others are making tons of money, instead of spending all your energy on the one losing tons of money, maybe you focus on the ones that are doing really well and those can now help lift up the other one. And so, again, same thing. If, you're, if there's other areas of victory, focus sometimes on the areas where we're walking in amazing victory and in those areas, now they can lead to more victory in the area where you're struggling. And so, you know, the thing with this is that, you know, kind of to, to wrap this up, I, I have a little bit more time here, but to wrap all this up is that 
healing is supposed to be very simple. And if it's not simple, it's not because God suddenly made it complicated. It's that there must be some kind of lie or barrier or attack or something going on because healing at its root is incredibly, incredibly simple. So I want to focus just how simple this really is. It's not supposed to be rocket science. I already mentioned Jesus didn't spend much time teaching on healing. He just went around healing people while teaching about the kingdom. He didn't say, well, let me do a, a three-day seminar on how to get healed and all these different things. It, the focus wasn't on healing. The healing was just the natural result of who he is and what he does. So an example of this is Naaman. In 2 Kings 5, verse 1, um, I'll, I'll read some of this, this story here. You may know about him, but it says, Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Syria. He was an honorable, he was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but, but he was a leper. Right, so I won't read the whole thing here, but Naaman had leprosy. He was a great man, and one of the servants um, who was an Israelite said, there's a prophet who can heal you, right? The God of Israel can heal you. So he went there. And um, I'll jump to verse 11, so 2 Kings 5, 11, because the messenger said, hey, go, go wash in the Jordan seven times. So in verse 11, Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. So he's saying, this, this prophet's going to come out and do something really cool, really fancy. It'll, it'll honor me because I'm so important. It'll honor him because he gets to look super cool and I'll be healed. And instead, you told me to go take a bath. Are you out of your mind? So he was offended at how simple it was. But that was the whole point. Because God doesn't look at us and say, well, you're a great, mighty man. You're rich. You're prosperous. You're very influential. You're doing everything right. You went to the right person, all this stuff. So therefore, I will heal you. It's saying like, no, I want you to realize it's about me, not about what, you know. It's not about the bath. It's about obeying me. So again, it's, it was all about how simple. See, you know, and he ended up doing it and being healed. Because what his, another servant said to him was, if he'd asked you to do something hard, you would have done it, but you won't do it because it's easy. Many times our flesh is saying, how do I earn this healing? I need to earn it. I need to feel like I jumped through enough hoops to earn it. Many times, you may have noticed this as well, many times people who get these amazing instant miracles are people who aren't even born again or baby Christians or people who are clearly walking in sin or walking in defeat in some area, and they have this amazing miracle. Then you see the person who's been born again for 30, 40, 50 years, and they're like, why is it taking so long? Sometimes it's because we've been walking with God so long that we're overcomplicating it. It's supposed to be as simple as getting born again. How easy is, is it to get born again, right? Is your life perfectly in order? Did you tithe? Did you do all these different things? Did you buy it? Did you earn it? No, not at all. It's supposed to be super simple. Romans 10 verse 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's how easy it is to be born again, right? You confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. And, and honestly, that word is sozo, that word saved is sozo. That's not just referring to spiritual salvation, that's referring to your body as well. So even this verse right here is referring to healing. It's just as simple. Being born again is literally, I believe in Jesus. It's that simple healing is the same thing. It's just as easy. It's just as simple. And the only reason it gets more complicated than that is if our brains try to complicate it because we're either frustrated, we don't see the evidence immediately, or because we get discouraged, or we believe a lie, or we think we have to earn it, or somebody told us that we deserve it. We, you know, it's because you don't eat healthy, whatever else. You know, we start to um, play the blame game, all that kind of stuff. So it's just as simple. It's that straightforward. And that's why instead of focusing on healing as if I need it to be more complicated because I need to study more, right? When you want to study something, but it's very simple, you find reasons, you find ways to make it more complicated than it needs to be. That's why many times, instead of focusing on healing, you say, I know I'm healed. It's a done deal. What's there to talk about? So I'm going to study other things. I'm going to study God's love and my new identity and God's nature and God's goodness. I'm going to study all these other fun things, peace and righteousness and kindness and how to minister to others and stuff like that. And in that, I'll, I'll be set free in whatever area is holding me back. You know, I used to be a prayer minister. A quick plug for the prayer line, right? It's open 24-7 now. It wasn't back when I was there. 24-7, you can call 719-635-1111. Uh, about 17 years ago, about 16, 17 years ago, I worked there for a while. And, and I loved it. And the funny thing was that when people called for healing, my prayer calls were like three and a half minutes. Because I was like, what's there to talk about? The Bible says you're healed, you're healed. Let's pray right now. Like, let's stand in faith. Thank you, Lord, for healing. And, uh, and we saw so many people get healed and so many miracles. 
But really, it's like, it's that simple. What, I don't need to debate. I don't need to preach to you a five-hour sermon. Do you know what the Word says? Yeah, you're healed, right? It's that easy. And so again, we overcomplicate it sometimes, and I get it, because it's frustrating when we're like, I get it, but I'm not seeing it. So I must need, it must be my brain needs more information. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you just need to follow whatever God's leading you to do. So again, it's supposed to be as simple as getting born again. Um, it's not two separate things. Healing and salvation are, you receive them at the same time. The moment you received Jesus, you received the healer. It's part of his identity. Light casts out darkness. doesn't matter what variation of darkness it is. Jesus is the light. He casts out all darkness. He casts out ignorance. He casts out poverty. He casts out laziness. He casts out selfishness, greed, all these different things, self-centeredness. It's all the same thing. There's one solution to every problem, right? I think there's a song, Jesus is the answer. Um, for the world today. I, I, we have to cut that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and so, you can imagine that I give my wife a house, which I've done. Um, and uh, sadly, it is her house, not not my house. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, she, she lets me know that when it comes time to decorate, uh, she has complete veto power. Um, but imagine if I gave my wife a house and she said, can I also have a fridge? Can I also have the walls? Can I also have the roof? I'd say, why are you asking me for that? The house includes all of that. The same way it is with Jesus. If you've received Jesus and you say, well, can I also have the healing? Can I also have the peace? Can I also have the joy? Well, yeah, those are all ex expressions of who Jesus is. You can't receive one without receiving the other. If you received the house, you received the refrigerator, you received the walls, you received the windows, there, that is the house. Same with Jesus. If you received Jesus, you received the peace, you received the joy, you received the freedom from condemnation and guilt and shame, you received the healing also. It's really, really simple. It's not supposed to be complicated. Don't overcomplicate it. That's why I say some shift focus, because sometimes if you focus on it too much, you're making it in, turn into a mountain. Focus on Jesus and let it turn back into something very small. It's a, just a very natural byproduct of knowing Him and who He is. So, and it's part of His identity. Exodus 1, 20, or 15, 26, God says, I am the Lord who heals you. That's at the very end of it. All right, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah healing, Jehovah the healer. It's who He is. You can't receive Jesus without receiving healing because it's part of who He is. It's very, very simple. And I encourage you, if you're standing in faith for healing right now, just remember, it's a free gift. It's as easy as being born again. Don't overcomplicate it if you're not seeing it right away. Say, God, what area do you want me to grow in? What should I focus on? Is there anything you want me to do? Um, just live life with God. Don't, get, don't turn it into a mountain that you can't overcome. So I, I hope this is a blessing to you. Again, call our phone line at 719 um, Six, three, five, eleven, eleven. I almost said my phone number. <laughs> like, don't call me personally. Um, go to karisdailygtn.com to find our free offer right now. So we have a healing guide for you. I think it's a digital healing guide. We also have other resources there. If you're watching a rerun, you can see whatever our free giveaway is for for that month that you're watching this. Um, yeah, we're open. Um, these shows are on seven days a week. The prayer line's open 24-7. So we encourage you to get connected, to let us know that you're standing in faith. To stand, We want to pray with you. We want to um, believe God for you, whatever your need may be, healing or anything else. And so we love you. I love you. I pray that you have an amazing rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.